Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have your King James Bible with you this morning, go to Genesis, the 26th chapter. I'm going to talk about something this morning that I normally don't do a whole lot of talking on. Gets you a bad name if you preach it very much. Not because it's not the truth, but because it's been so abused by so many snake oil salesmen that we see today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a certain channel on the satellite that sometimes I'll be going through the menu and it'll say camp meeting there. And I'll think, well, I know what it is already, but I'll click on there and see if something's changed. Yeah. And there's a man on there selling his getting rich quick things, you know. Yeah. Well, my goodness, camp meeting sure has changed since I was a kid. Right. Amen. Camp meeting used to mean the same thing as revival. Amen. Oh. Hallelujah. But anyway, it's a subject that uh, I don't touch on a whole lot. Maybe that's not a good thing. I don't want to talk to you this morning about reaping in the time of famine. Genesis 26 and 1, talking about Isaac here in the midst of a great famine. The Bible says this, and there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. In other words, this is a different famine. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. So apparently, since how the Lord knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart, apparently Isaac had considered, since the famine was so bad, he had considered going somewhere where maybe the famine wasn't. He had, he had considered going down to Egypt. But the Lord appears to him, the Lord speaks to him, and says, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Now Egypt, we know, is always a picture of the world. And it's never a good thing to look to the world as your source or your means or your provider. Amen. Amen. Right. So many times we find ourselves doing that today. We find so many people that do that. We look to the government to be our provider. Right. We look to society to be the one that supplies our provision. We look to so many different avenues today yeah. as being our source whenever our source should always be the Lord. Amen? Amen? People invest in the stock market because that's their source yeah. of income. That's their source of wealth. Well, the bad news is the stock market may crash tomorrow. Amen. The good news is God won't. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. The good news is you can invest in God today, right. in the kingdom of God today, and it will not crash tomorrow. Right. And there is a law in God that yeah. cannot be broken. It's not one that's just, well, Brother Billy, that was under the law. No, no, no. This was before the law. This has always been. It's a just like, you know, they say what goes up must come down. There is a spiritual law in God of reaping and sowing. Yeah. It has always been this way. It's not just something that was in the law and has been done away with just so that you don't have to give anything. As most of the people use that, you know, well, that was the law. Yeah, you're a tight one. What's wrong with you? You don't want to give to God. Right. Amen. I got an all right. I might have got a clear in the throat by there. I don't know if I didn't hear any amens or not. You use that excuse. Well, that's under the law. No, you just don't want to give. You want to hold on to what you got. Amen. But there is a spiritual law in God. You reap what you sow. Yeah. The Bible says, God, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That's God's Word. Yes. It, it's, it'll be here after everything else is gone. Yes. Jesus said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my Word shall remain. Amen? Amen. So God's Word was in the beginning. Right. Read John, the first chapter. Right. God's Word was in the beginning. Yes. God's Word will be in the end. All right. God's Word will be all throughout eternity. There's not going to be in the end. Amen? Come on. But you will reap what you sow. And we're going to read that scripture here in a minute, but I want to talk to you first about Isaac in this time of famine. If you want to know how to reap in the time of famine, let's look at this this morning. The Lord said to him, Don't go down to Egypt. 
that dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Amen. Sojourn in this land. I'm in verse 4. The Lord tells him to sojourn in this land. What land? The land of famine. And I will be with thee. And I will bless thee. Whoa, wait a minute. You mean in the land of famine? He's going to bless me? Listen to what he says. And I will bless your seed. He said, I will give all these countries. Yeah. I will give these. I will give them. All these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven, yeah. and will give the, thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, yeah. because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, and my commandments, and my statutes, and my law, and Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Now we just learned that there was a great famine where? In the land of Gerar. The place where Isaac was at. And he had considered moving on. Finding greener pastures as it were. But God said, no, you stay right where you're at. And right where you're at, if you stay where I command you to stay, I'm going to bless you where you're at. Amen? Listen, and if you're where God wants you, it may look like you're down to your last chicken leg. But if you're where you want, where God wants you, God's going to bless you. God's going to take care of you. God's going to bless your seed. Amen? That's right. We find in this that Isaac obeyed God's Word. You know, there's a blessing in obeying God's Word. Amen. Oh, I like what Brother Slee said this morning. I don't know if it went over the top of y'all's heads or if you grabbed a hold of it as it went by, but I got a hold of it. He said, there's one decision that you need to make. Yeah. That's to follow Jesus. After that, all the decision making's up to him. <laughs> Amen. After that, the decisions have already been made. Just follow his word. Follow his word this morning. Yeah. Follow Jesus. Well, listen to what happens. Isaac dwelt in the land of Gerar. He obeyed the voice of the Lord. He walked by faith yeah. and not by sight. Amen. And he stayed where the Lord wanted him to be. Yeah. Now drop down with me to verse 12. It says, Then Isaac sowed in that land. What land? The land of Gerar. Right. The land of famine. Amen? Oh. And then he lost everything that he had and he died a horrible death of starvation. No. Uh oh, that ain't what it says, is it, huh? Oh, my, my, because he obeyed the Lord and he stayed where he was at. And it says, He sowed in that land. He planted seed during the time of famine. And what happens? The Bible says, He received in the same year. A hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. No, you don't mean it. Oh, yes, I do mean it. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If we sow to the flesh, we shall reap of the flesh corruption. But if we sow it unto the Spirit, we shall reap of the Spirit. Eat what life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing. Yeah. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Oh my Lord and my God. If we obey the voice of the Lord. If we'll plant seed where He's got us. If we'll plant the seed we will reap in due season if we faint not. I'm just seeing Isaac out there now. Or maybe he had some of his servants doing it. You know during the famine there ain't no rain. And the earth gets dry and it gets hard and it gets cracked. Right. Amen. You ever seen ground where the crack open is so dry? Amen. Amen. There he is out there planting the crop. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Oh, he's out there breaking the sod. Amen. What's he do with that old dry and burnt up ground? He plants a seed. Why? Because God is more than able to, if you plant a seed, you will reap in due season. If you faint not, if you obey God and stay where He's got you and plant seed, you will reap in the time of famine. So here's a big mystery for you. How do you reap in the time of famine, you sow in the time of famine. You plant seed in the time of famine. The Bible says he waxed great. And he went forward and he grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great store of servants. And the Bible says he 
became so prosperous here and during this time and in this land that the Philistines envied him. They were envious of him. I wonder how many times people looked at us and our relationship with the Lord and envied that. Uh -huh. It depends on where they saw you. Yeah. If they saw you in church on Sunday morning with your hands lifted up and shoot them up, 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 maybe they did envy you. Yeah. But if they saw you Monday morning on over there in line at Walmart and heard you griping and complaining, maybe they didn't envy you so much. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Maybe they didn't want so much what you had. Yeah, right. Right. Amen. If whenever they needed a helping hand, you drew yours to your bosom. Amen. Yeah. Right. Oh, maybe they didn't envy you so much. Mom. Maybe if you, maybe when they needed help, you wasn't there. That's right. Right. They didn't envy you then. Amen. They envied Isaac. He obeyed the voice of the Lord. Yeah. He planted in the time of famine, Amen. and he reaped. Why? Because God will not be mocked. Right. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. Amen. And in the land where he had him. Listen to the flesh, more than likely, it didn't make any sense. It usually doesn't. What God does usually does not make any sense yeah. to the flesh. Yeah. Right. To the carnal mind, it makes no sense. Well, that's why they're still trying to figure out where we all came from. Right. Amen? Right. People will say, you mean you don't believe the science of Darwinism? Darwinism not science, it's a theory. Really? Right. Amen? A theory means you can't prove it. It's just what you think happened. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So they still trying to figure out where we came from. Right. Well, there was a big bang. Well, if so, who caused the big bang? Come on. Well, it was caused by gas. Well, who put the gas there? You can't get away from God, even in that mess. That's right. Amen. Come on. So God here is showing us a picture of Isaac <clears throat> planting during the time of famine and reaping a harvest. Amen. And it didn't make no sense to the carnal mind. It didn't make any sense to the carnal mind. Come on. Most of the time we think it just don't make sense. Yeah. Lord, I came to church with $20 in my pocket. And that's all I got to do me. Yeah. It don't make no sense for me to give any of that. How many times you heard somebody say, well, I'm going to give as soon as I can afford to. <laughs> well, good luck with that. That ain't never going to happen. Amen? amen? You ain't never going to think you can afford to with that attitude. Oh, amen? Amen? You ain't never going to think you can afford to with that attitude. Amen. It don't matter. Lord, give you a million dollars. You find something else to do with it besides give any different to Him. Right. Amen. Amen. How many times has this ministry been promised by people? Oh, I'm waiting on a big settlement. Yeah. As soon as I get my check, I'm putting some money in the offering. Yeah. They got their check, but did not ever make the offering. <laughs> Amen. Right. Always wait until things are better before they plant any seed. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, didn't wait till things got better. He obeyed God and planted seed during the time of famine and he reaped a harvest. Why? Because God's word will not fail. If you plant, you will reap. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. God will not be mocked this morning. Well, I can't afford to. Listen to me out there by radio. Listen to me out there by video. Listen to me out there by the CDs and the cassettes. You can't afford not to. You cannot afford to shut up your bowels of giving and compassion. Amen. You cannot afford to dam up the living water that flows in your life because it will die and stagnate. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You cannot afford to quit giving. Amen. You cannot afford to quit sowing seed even during the time of famine. Amen. Amen. How many times have you heard, sad to say, more times than not, I've heard this by Christian people. Those born again, living for the Lord, supposed to be following Jesus. Well, I just don't know what in the world we're going to do. That's probably, and all of us have probably said that. What in the world are we going to do? That's probably the way Isaac thought. When the famine was getting so bad, what are we going to do? Maybe we'll go down to Egypt. Maybe we'll go over here. Maybe we'll do this. I heard over here they, there's a prosperous land. But God said, you plant where you're at. You plant during the circumstance that you're in right now. Whether it's day season or night season or wet time or dry time, you plant. Don't allow the situation and the circumstances to stop you from giving to God.
Don't allow the circumstances and situation to stop you from planting seed. Because when you stop planting seed, you cannot grow anything without... If somebody surely knows that. Amen? Amen. You can't grow a crop until you break up the ground and plant some seed. Amen? Be not deceived. God, I'm telling you, I'm telling I'm giving you a foolproof investment this morning. God will not be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also Amen. reap. Amen? That's the Word of God. That's not Brother Billy. Amen. That's not some crazy loon on television trying to steal your million dollars you're sitting on. Amen. So there's a famine going on. Yeah. The earth nothing but dry, hard, yeah. dusty ground. Isaac them out there planting seed. Amen. Amen. How many times have you heard of people being down on their luck? Or that's what the world calls it. Yeah. Down and out. Yeah. Don't have two dimes to rub together. I can't tell you the times when I was evangelizing. Mm. I'd preach and we'd have our CDs set up, you know. And mm. we, asked for, we asked for less than any other singers that I ever set up with. They always wanted $15 or $20 for one of their CDs. And all we asked for, well, I think we started out asking five. And then we went up to seven. And with inflation, we're finally at ten. Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> anyway, we asked for a love offer. But oh, they... They just couldn't afford it. They, they just didn't have it. They just couldn't give anything. And we wasn't asking. We weren't really selling them as it were. We, we give, we've given away more CDs than we've ever sold. Amen. But that aside, they, 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 they didn't have it to give to God. When the offering plate was passed, they didn't have it to give to God. Whenever you offered them a CD for a love gift, they didn't have it to give to God. When you asked them for an offering, they didn't have it to give to God. But it was strange to me how they always had money for cigarettes. Amen. Now they always had money for a Big Mac or a taco. The same people that stood there in church and told you they had no money for God would get together and meet at Pizza Hut when church was over. And unless I'm mistaken, Brother Sleece, they ain't giving that food away at Pizza Hut. Amen. Come on. You have to buy it. That's the truth. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know how much cigarettes are now. What are they? Five dollars a pack or higher? Well, going up all time. Yeah, going up all time, Brother Sleece said. But can't afford to give to God. No. That's pitiful. Yes, sir. I'm telling you. Mom. You gotta plant. Right. <clears throat> you gotta sow some seed. Mom. Even when times look rough and times look bad. Mama used to tell us a story. Don't ask me what this has to do with this sermon, but I'll share it with you. <laughs> some things you never forget. She'd tell us stories when we go sleep at night, you know. She told one about old hard times. I can't get it right, I'm sure. But the parents <laughs> told the kids, they said, they said, now don't y'all touch his ham. This is for hard times. Yeah. We're saving this for hard times. Don't touch us. This is for hard times. So one day mom and daddy's gone and somebody knocks on the door and it's an old bum and his name's Hard Times. <laughs> and they say, hold on a minute. Mom and daddy been saving something for you. <laughs> and they gave away their ham. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? In all of that, that was probably the best thing they could do. Because that hand wasn't even last them very long until they hit the bone. But when they planted that seed and gave it to that old bum, amen, yeah. be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Come on, bro. Amen. Come on, bro. Oh, I could get happy this morning. My, 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 my. Uh, let us not be weary in well doing. Talking about planting seed, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. My Lord and my God. Can I share another scripture with you this morning before I let you go? Good, because i got about four or five of them. Psalms 37 and 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, King David said, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Now, I don't know how old David was at this time. 
he says himself that he was old. Some of you Bible scholars out there probably know exactly how old he was, but I can tell you this. He had seen times of famine, but he still, during the times of famine, didn't see God's people starve to death. Amen? During the time of war, he still did not see God's seed forsaken or begging for bread. During times of heartache, he didn't see God's seed fall to the wayside. During the times whenever it looked like there was no way God always made a way. Yes, thank God. Oh, I wish you'd get a hold of this this morning. Hallelujah. During the times of tragedy, during the times of war, during the times of famine, God always made a way. Amen. See, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Right. So in the land where you're at, so in the season where you're at. Come on. You see, in man's way of setting up things and the way it is that God set up the seasons here on earth, yeah. there's a time to plant. There's a time to sow. There's a time to reap. Amen. Right. They, they'll, they'll plant the seed during the springtime and then during the fall, you know, they'll go out and they'll harvest it. Right. On the spiritual side of that, the time to plant is always. Because it does not depend upon the weather, it depends upon God and His Word. Right. That's why here in America they plant in the springtime. They reap during the fall because it depends upon the weather. Right. Amen? It depends upon the cold. It depends upon the heat. It depends upon the rain. It depends upon all of that. But the seed that you plant in the kingdom of God depends upon one thing. That's the foundation of God's Word. And He's already promised us that any seed that you plant in good ground in His kingdom, you will reap from that which you have sown. Amen. Amen. So during the time of famine, you say, well, we ain't got enough stuff right here to shake a stick at. What are we going to do? Got out my billfold and ain't hardly got nothing in it. What am I going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some of it in the offering plate. I'm going to give some of it to the Lord. I'm not going to be weary in well-doing. I'm not going to faint or allow my giving to fail during the time of famine. I'm going to continue to plant seed. Amen. Amen. If you want to reap during the time of famine, you got to sow yes. during the time of famine. Amen. Yes. My, 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 my. How many times you heard somebody say, maybe you said it yourself, maybe all of us have said it one time or another. I mentioned this a while ago. When I get that big check, I'm going to give some money. Amen. When I get that settlement, I'm going to give some money. Yeah. When I get that new job that pays more than I'm making now, then I'll be able to afford to tithe. Yeah. Amen. Come on. In other words, when I can afford to give, when things get better, I'm going to give. Amen. Come on. Listen, don't wait, for, don't wait for the rain so now. Right. Don't wait for things to get better so now. Amen. Don't wait until things get better bright and sunny here, amen? Give to God now. Don't, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't stop putting your tithe in the offering plate just because times are getting a little tighter or harder than what you anticipated, amen? amen. Plant the seed. I still believe God's Word. Yes, sir. I still believe if we don't give to Him, we rob from Him. All right. Oh, my goodness. Amen? You can tell by looking, we ain't getting rich around here. But we still believe. Amen. Listen, we ain't getting rich, but we ain't starved to death. Amen. We hadn't been forsaken. Oh. We had never, oh my, my, my. We've always been provided for. You can tell by looking. I'm trying to get some of my provision off right now. We always have been provided for. Amen. All right. Oh my, my, my. <clears throat> Don't wait for the rain so now. Don't wait for things to get better. Plant seed now, brothers and ladies. And we're talking about, I guess I, I focused a lot, a lot of this so far on dropping your offering and your tithe and the offering plate. But you know, you can plant a lot of things. Amen? Don't wait till you have time to help somebody. Take the time to help somebody. Amen. Don't wait till you feel good enough or feel like you have enough strength. No, use some of the strength you've got now to help somebody. Amen? Amen? Don't wait till you feel like loving somebody. Love them right now. Right. Right. Amen. 
Amen. Don't wait until you feel or until God moves on you or speaks to you out of a cloud to be merciful to somebody. Plant some mercy right now. Amen. Plant mercy. What are you talking about? Yeah. The Bible says the merciful shall obtain mercy. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. The merciful, if you sow mercy, yeah. you will reap mercy. God. How about forgiveness? Oh, Brother Billy, surely not. The Bible says if you forgive, you'll be forgiven. If you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. Right. I didn't write that. Man. That ain't in my, that, I didn't write that book. Yeah. If you sow forgiveness, you reap forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Think about them people you can't bring yourself to forgive. Think about those people that you refuse to have mercy on. Think about those people that you refuse to love and realize that unless you sow those things, you can't reap those things. The merciful shall obtain mercy. Those who forgive will be forgiven. Sow some things. Amen? Yeah. Oh, uh, reap during the time of famine. Uh, Sow during the time of famine. You will reap during the time of famine. Right. When you don't feel like it. I wonder if that man that came along and found that the uh, man that had fell among thieves and was beaten up and bruised and bleeding to death laying there in the ditch. I wonder if that man right there that was passing by, I wonder if, you know, if he just had so much free time and he didn't really have nothing else to do. He wasn't really going anywhere. He had some money to throw away. No. He took time, which he probably didn't have. Amen. He used strength, which he could have used for something else. He used money, which he could have used for the journey he was on. And he took all of that and invested it in the work of God. Amen. Pick that man up. Pour him the oil and the wine. Put him on his own beast. Let him into the city. Paid somebody to take care of him after he was gone. Oh, I said, Brother Billy, when's the time to give? Now is the time Amen. to give. Amen. It's always the time to give. Now, I won't wait till things get better. Because if you don't start giving, things ain't going to get no better. That's right. Oh, that preach. Brother Billy, I don't have it to give. Well, maybe you don't have it to give because you ain't giving it when you've got it. All right. Amen? Come on. Plant some seed. Amen. Plant some seed. That way something will grow. Yeah. We're talking about reaping during the time of famine. Amen. Listen, we live in a time whenever things are so uncertain. Right. Amen. Right. Whenever you turn on the news and it seems like that world war is about to break out. Right. Saw them interviewing last night on the news channel. They were interviewing some guy trying to get into the presidential race as a libertarian. Libertarian, excuse me. And they were talking about how that if he does, it'll take one, two, three percent of the vote that would go to they think would go to Governor Romney. Well, they were acting like if this guy gets in the race, that that would help Obama, President Obama, excuse me. And this guy, you wouldn't believe the stuff he was. What about Iran and their nuclear weapons? All of them have them. What about legalizing drugs? Here we all should smoke marijuana. There'll be some people vote for that crackpot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Amen. But we live in a time whenever it's everything's unstable. Right. Everything but God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Everything but God's Word, Brother mm -hmm. Yeah. If you want to invest in something that is a sure shot, guaranteed to reap you a hundredfold, guaranteed to never fail, invest in the work of God. Amen. There are souls that are lost and dying and going to hell. It's time somebody got concerned enough to do something about it. Amen? Right. Concerned enough to give of their money. Concerned enough to give of their time. Amen. Concerned enough to give of their strength. Right. Concerned enough to give of their love, their mercy, yeah. and their forgiveness. I heard on the news yesterday, somewhere down south, they wouldn't let a black couple be married in their church. Because they were black. African American. Said the minister married them somewhere else. He wouldn't have married me nowhere else. He didn't want to cause no uproar with the church, so he didn't marry them inside their church. He took them somewhere else and married them. He wouldn't have married me. I went and found me somebody let me get married in their church. If the reason was because of the color of their skin. Amen. That is sickening. Amen. That is so pathetic. Amen. That makes me doubt those people's salvation. Yeah. Right. 
Really? Guess what, people? When you stand before Jesus, He ain't white. He ain't the fair, complected, blue-eyed man you see in a lot of the pictures that are painted. He's a Jew. He is not an American. All you Jew haters out there, one of these days, you will stand before Jesus Christ. Amen? Who was a Jew when He was in the flesh. Then what are you going to think? Oops. Where's that white God I've been planning on standing in front of? Yeah. Pitiful. And whenever you sow those kind of things, you will reap from those kind of things. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh corruption. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap from the Spirit everlasting life. Amen. Amen. I ain't got off subject. We're talking about reaping. During the time of famine. If you want to find favor, show favor to somebody. Oh, I can we can we we can get you maybe we don't have to stay on this for more than one Sunday. Yeah, I think so. Amen. Talk about planting when the ground's dry. Yeah. When the sun's beating down. When it seems like you ain't got two widows' mites to rub together, dropping them in the offering blade as you go by. And Jesus saying, This woman's gave more than all these others. Because she gave a sacrificial gift. Amen. If you want to reap during the time of famine, sow during the time of famine. I think we will pick this up next week. Somebody else have something this morning? Yeah.